Good afternoon, all of you. So uh, we'll review a few things from a video lecture we saw in IIT Bombay X, which is on preparation of slides. Okay, how do you make uh, slides for presentation? But before I'm going to review the uh, topic, I'm going to uh, show you a presentation. Okay, I'm not going to speak. I'm just going to uh, show some slides. Okay, each slide for about uh, 10 seconds or so and I might just speak very little, it is not a full presentation, but I just want you to uh, look at the content of the slides okay. and then write down in your piece of paper what you think is good about that particular slide or the overall presentation and what you think is bad and what can be improved. Okay, so here we go. So I'll go through the entire slides very quickly once, and then if you want, uh, we can do it once more. Assume that this is a set of slides your student has uh, made, and then the student is going to a conference, national conference or international conference, and uh, comes and shows it to you, sir or madam. Uh, I've made the slides. Uh, can you please take a look at it and give me some comments okay so you don't bother about what is technical here in this at this point because uh, we're just looking at formatting of slides okay so you please look at the slides and give your students comments and we're going to listen to your comments first and then we will go through a review of the video presentation okay so this is the first slide background information Microscopes are common, see bacteria, how to measure. So then there is a picture of bacteria and then there is microscope. This is the next uh, slide. It says how do you get a disease, contamination, infection, microscopy helps. The third slide two key points Albert Einstein says everything should be made simple and not simpler and there is an old saying tell them what you are going to tell them, tell them and tell them what you have told them, slide number 3. So do not worry too much about the contents, it is not about the technical content in set which is just the quality of slides, I want you to comment and look only at the quality of slides. So just write down points on what is good about uh, different slides, good about the presentation and what, what is bad and what can be improved. So this is another slide, uh, two quotations from Victor Hugo, uh, where the telescope ends, the microscope begins, which of the two has the grander view, old saying Affection like melancholy magnifies trifles, but the magnifying of the one is looking through a telescope at heavenly objects, that of the other like enlarging monsters with a microscope. So and then one last slide conclusion, a digital image processing provides revolutionary new tools for studying colloidal suspensions, applying image processing ultra microscopy poses some problems whose resolution has not been discussed in a unified way. A rapidly growing community of researchers will come up against these practical hurdles. We describe a set of image processing algorithms extracting quantitative data from digitized video microscopy images of colloidal suspensions. We have discussed in detail measurements of microspheres, self diffusion coefficients, measurement of charge spheres, pair interaction, the image analysis methods we have developed to perform quantitative time resolved imaging studies of colloidal suspensions, which offer high accuracy while requiring only general purpose commercially available equipment. Utility of these methods is in studying the microscopic dynamics of colloidal suspensions. Okay, so that is the end of the talk. I will 
go back and review the slide, show you the slides once more. So, you can get a overall picture. The first slide background, some introduction, some two key points, two quotations and conclusion. Okay. So, I am going to give you some time to think about it. Please discuss with your neighbors what you think was good about this slides, not the presentation. So, presentation means you need to look at the content as well. What we are seeing is just the quality of slides. So, discuss with them what was good, what points were good about the slides and what points were bad and what can be improved. All right. So, let us go to uh, RVS College of Engineering. Poor background color, color selection. Okay. Okay. Text, text color also. Text color is also bad. Okay. Image quality and uh, image description. Image quality and image description. Okay. In conclusion, uh, uh, paragraph not justify and also conclusion should be single. Yes, conclusion. In PowerPoint presentation, uh, there is uh, no paragraph. In conclusion, they given only paragraph. Uh -huh. Okay, thank you. So, uh, we will uh, take it's Too up lengthy. The conclusion is too lengthy and not justified. Okay, it is not justified properly and it is too lengthy. Thank you very much. Let us hear from somebody else. Thank you, sir. This is uh, Francis Institute, Borivali. Uh, sir, uh, first of all, there is absolutely lack of uniformity in the presentation, each slide going on its own different way. Okay. Uh, let me repeat it for others. There is lack of uniformity. Each slide is its own uh, style. Yeah, uh, coming to the first one, there are two images used where no credit is given or any uh, reference mentioned as to where the images have been taken from. Excellent. So, I will repeat it for the benefit of others that the images are not credited from where it has been taken. Yeah, and uh, in uh, most of the slides, one problem that is common is that uh, the visual should be friendly to the audience. In this case, the background color and the font color, they go so much against each other. Uh, it's difficult to read. It's jarring to the eyes in some of the slides. It is jarring to the eyes, which is something the uh, previous uh, center also pointed out. It's background color and font color selections are not good. Okay. Yeah, uh, but comparatively, they have done well in the third slide where the credits have given. Uh, the graphic selection also is good. Okay, the third slide. Let us see what is the third slide. In this one, okay. In this, the credits are given. Yes. Okay. All right. And then? And then, uh, uh, in some of the slides, we felt that the font size could be increased. I think the fourth one. Fourth one, font size. And okay, very good. And the last one, the conclusion uh, slide, there is just too much of data. When it comes to a PPT, we expect raises. And the speaker would give us rest of the content, but here we have an entire paragraph being given. So, uh, it will be difficult for the audience to follow anything for that matter. And even the formatting has gone wrong, some of the content is cut out. Okay, thank you very much. The same point the previous institute also said. Thank you very much, Francis Institute. Let us go on to Mahalingam College of Engineering. So, we noticed that uh, the background color can be a light color. Background can be light. A white okay. background is better. Okay, and like, then? And uh, uh, in most of the slides, uh, there are pictures, but the alignment is missing. The pictures are not uh, aligned, that is a new point. So, I request you to give points which has not been covered before. Two centers have given uh, very nice points. So, please try to add points to that. So, you are right, the images are not aligned. Any other new point? In conclusion slide, the information can be a points. Information can be written as points. Thank you very much. Let us go to uh, KIT College from Kolhapur. Do you have anything to add? 
I think uh, identification of the slide number should be present. I think those slide numbers did not uh, have any identification marks over there. Uh, can you repeat what do you mean by identification of slide number? Yes. You, uh, later on when I want to review uh, slide number 3, slide number 4, so the numbering, uh, some indication that oh, the number slide am I referring when I ask. Yeah, the number actually was there, but actually it is very small. Thank you for pointing that out. So, in some slides there are numbers and some slides there are no numbers, okay. And when they are there, it is very small. Thank you for that new point. Let us go on to the next college, Sharad Institute of Technology. The color selection is not good. Yeah, can you? Uh, then uh, that is yeah. too flashy. Yes, and can you include uh, any new points? of each slide are not I means related to one another. Okay. Another uh, conclusion having more information. Uh, also, the font size is uh, less there and uh, slide numbering is also not uh, for each slide. Okay. So, we have got two points here. The font size is small and uh, conclusion, uh, conclusion font size is small and the slide numbering. Thank you very much. So, I think uh, most of you have covered a large number of points. So, let us go now and review the contents. So, you have rightly uh, pointed out lot of uh, faults of the slide that you saw. So, then what should be a good presentation? So, a good presentation is from the content point of view, thus a few very simple things. The idea of a presentation is that you need to convey one story. Most of the presentations are revolve around one story and very one message. Keep what is that one message you are trying to convey. Remember when we wrote this abstract yesterday, the problem was one statement, the result was one statement. Okay. It is just one message that you want to convey. Around the result you can say I use this methodology, then it I use this method, then it, it implies this and so on. But the core idea is just one, the core story is one. What is that one story you are going to say? Okay. So, these are two quotes which we discussed little while before. You make it simple, okay, so that people can listen, but do not make it trivial. That is what the meaning of what uh, Einstein said. And one more old saying is that one way you could structure a talk is you tell the audience what is going to come first, okay, tell them what you are going to tell them and then you tell them in a simple way and once you have completed, you revise what you have told them. So, reiteration is a very important point in a talk. Unlike a written material, where people can read any paragraph any number of times. In a presentation, you are the driver, you control everything, you control what they listen, they cannot control what they want to listen. So, when you are presenting, it is very important that you tell a couple of points or at least one point reiterated in several ways. According to this saying, you have to tell at least three times, once before once during and once after. So, how is a presentation different from a written material? Many of these facts are quite uh, simple and trivial, but most often we forget them. And we forget them and use the same old principle which we use for writing. So, for example, the conclusion that you saw was a very nicely written conclusion which is supposed to be only written not to be said. Okay. So, we will see some points of what distinguishes presentations from a, a written form of communication. In written you have the audience has plenty of time to assimilate, they, have, they schedule their time, they can read any time they want, how many hour times they want, but presentation is just once and the attention span is very limited. Now, suppose something I say now and I keep on blabbering several things, my main point is one point, I keep on saying something else, 
you will just lose your concentration on what I am saying and you will start thinking something else and that time span is about 20 to 30 seconds. If I lose you for 20 seconds, it means I have lost you. You have also lost the topic. So I need to keep you engaged, you need to keep the audience engaged. That is not the problem with written communication. In written communication, it is always the reader chooses how much time they want to spend. Similarly, in, in writing, details are very important. Here, it can be sketchy. I can just do some hand waving things. But I am conveying the story nicely, like yesterday we saw. When people were conveying the idea of how monkeys can uh, distinguish numbers, when they put it across through a story, it was so engaging, right. So, similarly, your unless your talk is in, that is an illustration of how people uh, attach to a presentation. So, you need to keep them with you. Some presentations were bad yesterday, they were, went very technical. That was for the school students. But when you keep them engaged, the attention is there with you. And for that purpose, you can be a little bit sketchy. You can do some hand where you can tell something else which is not related, but just keep them engaged. So, this point many of you had raised. In the conclusions, if it is a written material, you need to have a fully grammatically current system, but sentence, but not in a presentation. It has to be point. In fact, if you make sure that it is grammatically incorrect, you will be forced to write a small phrase. It has to be point wise and small phrase. Okay. So, we have seen different types of talks as well. So, there are talks can be broadly classified based on their spe specialization and the duration. So, for very special audience, you have on the right hand side and broad audience you have on the left hand side. Similarly, a short duration and a long duration. Now, if you look at this, most of the talks lie here. What does it mean? As you speak to more and more special people, specialized audience, the length of the talk also increases, that is what this means. But other than that, you have some exceptions here. A long talk for a specialized audience is called as a colloquium. A short talk for a very broad audience like you met your vice chancellor is an elevator pitch. But you could also have a short talk for a specialized audience which is like a sound bite. A sound bite is something like I give you a quick summary of my talk or I am having a poster outside this room. I want you to come and see the poster. There are hundreds of posters. I get one minute as an advertisement. One minute I am going to convey very quickly why you should come and attend my poster or see my poster. So, that is a sound bite. Similarly, a TED talk like the one you might have seen yesterday, a TED talk is can be large, large time, but is usually for a very broad audience. So, these are some types of talks and you need to be aware who is the audience you are going to talk to and what is the duration that is given to you. So, you need to plan accordingly. So, the whole slides presentation is uh, is around this objective. So, the layout of slides is there are few thumb rules. If you have 20 minutes to present, a good thumb rule is have no more than 20 slides. If you force yourself that, the entire design of the talk will be just appropriate you cannot put more more material per slide, it will not look ugly. But you need to have this thumb rule. You cannot say, oh I have so much work to do, how can I just do it in 20 slides, I need 40 slides. 
our students do this very often. They come to me saying, sir, I cannot miss all these things. At least I'll have 50 slides for this 20 minutes talk. What we say, just cut down. I just say, I'm just ruthless with them. Just show me 15 slides and then you can add the rest. 15 slides, 15 minutes, done. Any other slide, put it as a backup slide. So there's a very good thumb rule you can try with your students. So that essentially means you have to use very short sentences. And that also means that you need to use images. And when you use images, you need to be careful. You need to choose images that create an impact, that it's there in their mind. It should not be something just because you are allowed to put some funny cartoon, you can't just come and put a funny cartoon there, which is actually a distraction. Okay? So it should create an impact, not a distraction. These are some points which we already saw. And uh, I will quickly see this. So look at these two slides. They're very packed, like the ones you saw in the sample slide I showed you. It's very packed. It's too dense. I don't know if you have gone to some international conferences. Uh, people from uh, non-English speaking countries like uh, China and Japan, uh, I'm not blaming them, but uh, since they don't speak English, they don't even learn English as we learn English as a second language. So for them, science, uh, arts, history, everything is in their native tongue, not like us. So for them, speaking in English is very uh, difficult. What they do is they have this slide, they can read English, they can read English very well. So they have the slide, they put the whole talk in the slide and let's say the slide is here, they look at it and just read it. Density of slides, density of slides should not be high. It should have telegraphic and terse length uh, sentences. We should avoid lengthy equations. We should recall all the symbols of equations in each slide. It is a good rule to have one slide per one minute. All the additional slides should be kept as backup. So all these things will be written and they will just read it. Now, why do a presentation, I am not uh, commenting on uh, their quality of work, some of them are very good, except that if you ask them to present in their native tongue, of course, they will do it wonderfully. But we do not have that problem. Our students, most of them do not have that problem. We all study science in English, at least after our, uh, in our higher studies, all science is done in English. But still, we have students writing full sentences. They just write full sentences and just read it out. If, if you are anyway going to read it out, why don't you just uh, put the slides and just stand? Why should you read it out? The uh, audience are not dumb, they can uh, read it. So these are some points that we try to drive in our uh, students' mind that you should not have long sentences. It should be very short and terse. This is another point somebody had made, I think from Francis Institute, that each slide is different. It does not look like one presentation. Each slide is showing a different thing. So unity is very important within the presentation. So if you have unity, everything looks similar, then you know that, okay, you are in one presentation. You look at a website. A well-designed website, all the pages will look similar. Look at a magazine. All the pages will have some commonality in the design. Of course, if you take India Today and if you take Outlook, they both are different. Suppose you take one page from Outlook and one page from India Today and make a book out of it, it look very odd. So similarly, a unity in presentation is very important. So, and unity can be achieved by getting common layout. The layout should be similar that I have the heading here, heading font is the same, heading background is same. I put a logo in one place and that same place should be everywhere in all the slides. This is the broad area in which I present my contents. Not that in one place I put title here, one page I put title here and so on. 
font size is uniform, background is uniform and so on. So, this unity actually ties up the entire uh, presentation. File format, it is a very good idea to avoid PPT. Avoid PPT if you are not carrying your own laptop because PPT is still not standard each version if you are not using your laptop, if you are asked to use PPT in another laptop with another version of PowerPoint it is going to most likely change the layout. Do not risk that always carry PDF. If you are having animations and if you are carrying your laptop you are free to use any format that you want, but that is a little bit risk. Suppose your laptop fails you are carrying that risk of a poor presentation. So, it is always better to carry slides on PDF and on different media as well not just in one place you keep it in your mailbox, keep it in your uh, drive or uh, drop box somewhere you can download anytime and uh, take it to the presentation uh, computer. Always it is a good idea to check the display in the final setup. Now, it might look very nice the color might look very nice on your screen, but when you project it, it is going to be totally different. That particular projector has three colors right, red, green and blue. The red color will have a loose contact ok. So, green and blue perfect. Now, it just so happens that many of your uh, graphs or tables you have put red color gone that is just not visible at all or it just flickers and comes all these things will happen. So, it is very important that you check before the day of presentation if possible or at least one hour before the presentation starts if you can go to the place load up the slides and then check if it works. So, on Saturday when you come at 9 30 for the presentation it should be ready. My advice is you prepare the slides today, bring it tomorrow and whenever you get free time please check it on the computer. You will know the kind of variation that can happen particularly if you do not belong to this college you are from some other college and if you come here you bring your format and check it out there it is probably going to have a problem. Something would be different something may not work like today the first presentation that I saw the, the first slide was black in color I did not check it today. It is a PDF file which works in all the things, but a view cannot display my title slide it just shows it as black. So, tomorrow you will be surprised I was surprised today the first slide did not come out well. So, I did not prepare well for my bad presentation, but in a sense it was good that at least I could show you that it is mistake that can happen whatever however uh, careful you are somewhere something can go wrong. So, always check before you uh, present you put it in that computer in that room you identify the room do not get surprised in the last moment identify the room go there load it up and check if it works. Particularly you should come to the back of the room and see if everybody can read what you have written. Some people like to put very large tables and put some numbers there. What is the point of putting tables and numbers in a presentation does not carry any use unless it is large and you want to highlight one particular thing try to use graphs, but if you want to put tables try to highlight in a very big font what is it that you want to highlight big tables are very difficult to read. And finally, it needs to be well rehearsed. It is almost like a performing art presentation is not like writing of course, writing also requires some amount of creativity and uh, the skills of an author presentation is little more you are actually performing in front of an audience. And like all performing arts like many of you would have done dramas or skates or some small uh, dance performance unless you practice 
it's not going to come out well on the stage. So we always recommend our students to write the talk and kind of mug up at least first few slides. So by that at least they are confident of the first few slides and the talk goes on well. If you lose the audience in the first 5-10 minutes then you have lost them for the whole talk. So at least for the first 5 slides what we ask them to do is to make a presentation, record it on their phone and then write the transcript. Because you remember there were 2 people from yesterday's presentation they were reading from their laptop on computer like this, right? So they read it like this. That is because they wrote it first, they wrote it in a language that is good for a written communication, not the spoken communication. So it is always good to speak whatever is coming, record it and then transcribe it as a writing. And when you transcribe it as writing, you make all grammatical corrections and better sentences and then mug it up. So this is what we advise the students that this is one thing that you could advise your students as well to do, to record, transcribe and then mug it up, at least first fly slides. Most good presenters always do this, maybe after 5-10 years of practice they do not need to write, but it takes a long time for most of us to do a talk spontaneously. We cannot speak spontaneously a very good points. So that is one point about rehearsing the talk, well written script and it has to be a very nice story. Like you see when a teacher tells a story like we had 2 teachers telling 2 beautiful stories yesterday and all of us sat and we were gripped to the teacher. She was actually conveying a technical point, but when it came out as a story, I mean I, I do not mean story as in a story of uh, Ramayana like the way they said, but there has to be a nice connectivity of thoughts, a nice flow of thoughts. So that is what I mean by story in a technical presentation. Keep them engaged during the talk and when you leave, it has to be some thought provoking thing that they should think about it. So how do we keep things in memory? Because we keep thinking about the same thing again and again and that reiterates our memory. So if you leave the audience with some interesting question, then they come back and oh he said this, so that means that oh before that he said that, so they are recollecting the memory. So before they leave uh, 10 steps from the hall auditorium, they would have already recollected so many facts and that reiterates in their memory and that stays longer. So that is the our ultimate objective of a talk and at the end there has to be just one take home message. Okay. So if I were to ask you what is the take home message of this presentation that I gave, what would you say? I spoke several things, I said that you need to tell things before, during and after. So did I convey any one message through this entire talk? Can we have some hand raises? Did I convey any one message? What is that one message did I try to convey? Kavikul Guru from Nagpur. So what is that one message? What is that one message I would have conveyed through? If you, if you were to, finally I want to say goodbye to the audience and before saying goodbye, I want to reiterate that message. So did that, I want to ask you. What was that one message you would like to convey from this whole talk? So it should be thought provoking and informative. No, no, I have not yet, okay, that is, no, my point is this, the whole of talk, I have tried to convey one message about how to make, prepare your slides for presentation, how to format your slides for presentation was my title of the talk 
and if I have conveyed one message and before leaving I am going to reiterate that message. So, I am going to ask you, you have seen this presentation, what is that one message that I try to convey in this talk? So, you conveyed the message that the slides should be symmetrical and you should, uh, we should. No, there uh, is one message. The presentation. You choose one message of the things that you are listing. What is the one important message? Rehearse the presentation before coming. Okay, thank you. Let us hear Repetition. from others. We should prepare well. Prepare well, okay. The information should be crisp and clear. Information has to be crisp and clear. Okay, thank you. So, that will be the last from this college, then we will go to the next college. A nice information being shared with all. Nice information shared with all, okay. So, uh, let me go to another college, uh, Dronacharya College of Engineering. This is in uh, Gautam Buddh Nagar, Uttar Pradesh, Dronacharya. So, what is that one message that you think can be conveyed through this? talk uh, for me take home message is that uh, i should rehearse and prepare well rehearse and prepare well okay thank you work hard to have a mastery work hard to have a mastery thank you very much we'll go to the next college eshwantrav chavan from nagpur again uh, sir i feel the ppt should be very highly planned ppt so the slide should be very highly planned, that is the message. Pillai Institute, Panvel. Uh, presenter should stick to the uh, rules given for the presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Kukatpalli. Keep the presentation simple, clear, interesting, thought provoking. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, anybody else in that college? Be an efficient presenter. Clear and efficient presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Sridatta Institute of Engineering. Sir, actually, presentation that is the PowerPoint, the word indicate each point should have some power. It should communicate with the audience. That okay. is the message you convey through your presentation. Okay, thank you. All right, so uh, now again. From my point of view, the take home message of the presentation was uh, keep it simple. So, that was actually uh, one of you had said that. So, that is what I also thought. Of course, uh, each of us can have our own view. The whole point was keep it simple. So, once you make it simple, many other things automatically follow. If your aim is to keep it simple, you cannot have dense slides. If you aim is to keep it simple, you cannot have a very long sentences. If the aim is to keep it simple, you will have nicely uh, uh, selected colors or nicely selected fonts and so on. So, the idea was is to keep it simple because as you saw yesterday when you are able to convey a difficult concept in a simple way, it goes across much more easily. Okay? Now, again I am going to go through another presentation. So, this presentation was uh, uh, submitted by one among you in the elevator pitch presentation and I am going to take you through this uh, slides and I would like you to look at it and again comment on this. This was actually made by one among uh, the participants after they have gone through this presentation and what they have learned from that they have used in this. So, let us see uh, what they have got. So, the first slide, nano size transition metal oxides as negative electrode materials for lithium ion batteries. Introduction, rechargeable solid state batteries have attractive power force. Example, lithium ion batteries are emerging as technology of choice for portable electronics. Main challenges, it is its design, electrodes made of nanoparticles, blah, 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 some technical thing there. Properties of metal oxide lithium cells, there is a figure and there is a caption. 
and there are images and there is a image caption there is a conclusion of two points ok. So, I will go back again. So, quickly comment on the slides quality of the slides what is good what can be improved going back again title slide introduction property slide images conclusion ok. We will go to Margaret tell us your comments about the quality of slides. Uh, there is no slide number in the slide then Excellent. Uh, how to comment on the slide number. Very good after that what else? So many figures are there ok. There is no correlation between the figures. There is no correlation between the, they are not aligned properly ok what else ok let me go to another college thank you very much Alwar. Ok, Rajanam Bapu, you have a question or a comment? Assume I found an image on a website. Mm -hmm. uh, it is also referred at the bottom and it is referring to the another website. Ok. So, I have moved to the another website, but the resource is not available. Now, which should I refer? When I use that image in my presentation, what should I refer now? Uh, what is your name? Rajesh Dantam. Ok. So, Rajesh has found a image in a website and uh, in that website they have said that they have taken from a another website, second website. But he goes and checks in that website, the second website it is not available. The question is uh, which website should he refer the original one or the one where he found it. Now, the answer to that is you should give only original one because the uh, idea is to give credit. The idea is not essentially to for others to download. It is not that you go and download from this place. It's it, the, you are not conveying that. You are conveying who the original person who created that. Okay. Now there are ways to find out that. Usually, what would have happened is in that original website. Maybe the site is up that the page uh, URL has changed. So, what you can do is you can do image search like Google allows you to do image search. So, you download the image from the first website, upload it into Google and search for it. Then you might find where it originally came from if the URL has changed and then you can give it. Usually, when you refer to images, it is sufficient if you give only the domain name you do not need to give the complete URL. If you give complete URL, you can put it as a link, but you do not need to give that you just need to give the domain name. So, that way if you, you can easily find the domain name, if you do not find please use the original website. Thank you very much for that question. UB Patel from Mesana, Gujarat. What are the standards to consider like uh, as per my knowledge that is 6 by 6, that is 6 words and 6 sentence should be incorporated in a particular slide. So, what is your opinion to include uh, that uh, how many words and how many sentences that would be ideal? Uh, yes, the one you suggest is one way to look at it, but there could be uh, other variations of it also. Some people uh, like to just use one sentence, have an image and then explain using that. Now, it depends on the nature of uh, the technical talk as well. So, some technical talk you cannot strictly put it in one line, you cannot strictly put it in six sentences and so on ok. So, you need to exercise your judgment there, you need not strictly follow. The essential point is that it needs to be simple and it should not be detailed. You have to convey the main point. So, 
what you say six words and six sentences is one of the thumb rules. There is other thumb rule which says that it should be just one minute per slide. So, you could just use one sentence and an image and then use it uh, you describe appropriately. Thank you very much. Is there any other comment? One comment is there like uh, uh, suppose we have one PDF file which is like uh, of a half page. So, is it uh, or like uh, good for like uh, putting a link for that particular PDF file or we need to copy and paste this contents in a slide? What is the uh, ideal method? So, you mean you have a PDF file which is a written material like a paper? Yeah, but it contains half page, only half page. And from the half page what, does it contain a picture or a table or what? Table, pictures, everything. No, you should definitely not use it as such because it will look too dense. If you use a written material, if you cut it and paste it on a slide, it will look too dense. It is not for a visual communication of a slide, it is only a visual communication of a written document which can be printed out. For that it is okay, all first of all cutting and pasting is wrong. Uh, as far as possible you have to advise your students to rewrite a table or redraw a figure slightly differently. If that is possible that is the best way to go definitely not cut and paste and definitely not cut and paste a half page PDF file because that will be too dense for a normal slide. Of course, it is just one image, if it is a microscopic image or some other photograph, it is a different, but uh, in general it is not advisable to cut and paste a PDF file. Thank you very much. Next college is LDRP from Gandhinagar. Uh, so, my question is uh, that is it necessary to put a question? on the last slide, uh, let us say six slide. For Saturday's exercise, yes, it is not for a normal presentation. The reason for Saturday's uh, presentation is as the instructor pointed out, if you start with a question and formulate your presentation around that question, then your uh, presentation better. It is something like a learning objective. At the end of the talk, what do you want the audience to know? So, that you set as a question and if you want the audience to know this and therefore, I have to convey this and then to check for yourself have the audience got it, you ask a question. It is it is just for your own practice and part of a training session that we give our students. It is not to be used in actual seminars. Okay, otherwise, for every presentation, it is not advisable, is not it? No, no, it is not at all advisable. Uh, so, the scientific methodology which has been prescribed, uh, is not it over generalized? Like, if you take many of the papers even uh, uh, shown today, do they really have all the components as highlighted, like the hypothesis or uh, prediction? Est, etc. No, normal papers will not have all of the components. It is either only one of the components that is possible. It is as I said, if you look at the uh, another um, slide that I showed you, each paper will be one component of the, the whole cycle of scientific methodology. It could be simply an observation. It need not be an hypothesis. Most of the papers, 80 to 90 percent of the papers are merely observations. Towards the end, they might give a possible explanation is this. So, they have a hypothesis which is not proved. So, they have an observation, they have a hypothesis, but it is not proved. Some papers might simply be only explanation, they have derived a set of equations to prove something. So, that will be 
only hypothesis and they might have some way to predict it, they may not have a prediction at all. So, the entire cycle if you see that somebody publishes observation, somebody else has got hypothesis, somebody else might come and do the prediction. So, this is the cycle can be split and most of this things that I have told you is by and large restricted to uh, science and engineering. In mathematics, it might be possible, it may not be possible, it is a little bit different. Although many authors claim that in mathematics also you can follow a scientific methodology, there are uh, people who do it that way. By implication, some areas of computer science, where it is theoretical computer science is more like mathematics but something else like algorithms, proving they are all only a part of a scientific method. It is not necessarily that you need to have an entire sequence of steps to publish an article. Does that answer your question? Yes. If you have a specific example where you are not finding it, I encourage you to try and discuss it among your peers or you can write to us. If we understand the subject, we might be able to tell you how to identify what it is. Thank you very much. Geetam University. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is uh, related to uh, giving a technical uh, course. You told that uh, a presentation or lecture should be made as simple as possible. But when it comes to giving a technical course for uh, engineering students, let us say I am teaching physics for an engineering B.Tech students. So, when it comes to a technical course, we are supposed to cover uh, at least 5 to 6 modules per course which deals with in-depth uh, uh, hardcore subject. Correct. So, in such case, how to uh, make a course as simple as possible and but, but we have to put it in a technical way. So, can you please share your experience to uh, uh, to or give your experience uh, in, in this regards. Okay. So, um, when but I how meant… How to make a course as simple as possible at the same time cover all the technical details. Correct. So, as I said, so uh, what I said now is not so much applicable to a classroom uh, situation because a classroom situation is uh, usually at the other end of the talk. You are talking to specialized audience and it is a long talk. So, there, there would be one simple message or two simple messages. What I typically try to do is per class or per lecture, I try to keep two simple messages to convey. I either write it down on the board or I towards the end of the class, I try to recollect that two simple messages. But that does not mean that those are other than that I do not convey anything, you actually build rigor around that. So, for students to understand and recollect, it is better that you convey that okay, this is what I am going to say, today we are going to discuss um, say the mechanics of um, uh, say one particular aspect of say quantum mechanics, a particle in a box. So, today the topic is particle in a box, but you can give a a small uh, example of what you are going to tell in that. And then you actually go and derive the equations, all that rigor has to be there because that is a different, you are doing a training now, you are not conveying one message. But the technical talks that we are talking is not a training session, that is a session of uh, making people aware that some things are there and then they come. But uh, like classroom lectures are training sessions, but even there if you prepare such a way that you have just one or two important messages to convey, if you can write it in the sentence form and either write it before the class or once the class gets over, you just write it that this is what was conveyed, then that will help them re uh, reinforce the things that you have taught. Does it answer your question? Yeah, thank you sir. Uh, my colleague is ha having another question. Yes, please go ahead. So, this is regarding uh, yesterday's topic, the authorship. Um, so, uh, we were say, when we were talking about the order of the authorship, the first or uh, the first author will be a person who is uh, who is like who has done the, all the work 
okay then the second becomes a senior in the lab who has helped in the work and third becomes your professor who is in who is the professor of the group or who is leading the group so as i said you have to decide a principle on which you want to decide the authorship you decide the the usually the lead author which is a professor in the group uh, has to have a principle if possible written down and since i have given you certain principles you could use many of this because these are standard things that are followed in western universities if you accept these principles you say your students that this is what i am going to follow okay before the student comes to your lab or starts the work you agree upon that and then you say okay the first author is somebody who has done at least 50% of the work the second author does not just need to be a student in the senior student in the lab only if the second author at least contributes 10% or 20% whatever you decide that percentage is only then she qualifies to be a author so that way if you have some principles with you stated or written down and agreed upon then it uh, leaves out it gives you it trains the students also in being professional that you don't decide that okay i like this student that's why i will have uh, uh, his name i don't like her so i will not have her name and so on so that becomes a personal bias and it becomes subjective the idea is to have as objective a principle as possible of course there will be variations you cannot measure it exactly but try to have as subjective as possible my question is regarding the api scores that you normally see so when uh, a student is there who has done the maximum work and your postdoc is the one who has given the idea to the work help the student also to do it but the postdoc has joined as assistant professor and is looking forward to become a associate will the api scores become a problem for them no means uh, they always say api score the first author gets 60% of the count Ah, uh, okay, but okay. Rest okay. of the forty is given to the. See, I think I mean this uh, code that you are talking about. Uh, the one way to uh, avoid that is actually if you agree upon yourself with within your group to state it part of the uh, paper just before the acknowledgement section. If in a particular paper you think that. uh the postdoc also has contributed significantly say 30% postdoc and 30% the first author then you please state it it's it may not be in terms of percentage but it could be in terms of what specific work was contributed by the postdoc but if you feel that it was just an idea and it didn't help much in planning so there is different criteria i told you there is planning execution analysis at least one of that and should have uh done some portion of the paper either written the draft reviewed the draft or suggested significant changes to the draft and the final point is they should have the ownership if something goes wrong will that person take ownership okay so if the postdoc has done all that then they should be given a second author and if you think that so the aps code is the corresponding author no i would not recommend to be a corresponding author because a corresponding author is uh, i am assuming the faculty is the main source of the idea it's just not a namesake uh, person there so in that case the faculty would be the uh, corresponding author but on the other hand if the postdoc is the main uh, drive behind this then it is also legitimate to give the postdoc a corresponding authorship okay i request you to uh, please write down this and send it to me by email or you can post in iit bombay x sure sir okay thank you very much yes sir kavi kulguru actually one is uh, the first one is uh, is it uh, necessary that we have to have some textual information on the presentation is it like we can just finish the presentation uh, with visuals and graphics okay 
you can certainly do that there is uh, no harm but the reason of having a, a little bit text is because of keywords so there could be some technical keywords which you might be pronouncing in one way they might be understanding in another way to avoid all those ambiguities okay and to stress important points suppose uh, you conveyed an idea okay and the person has missed out on the idea okay suppose they just slept off for 10 seconds they missed it out and then they will be lost so that is the reason some text is recommended but if you can nicely articulate using images that's more welcome okay thank you so yeah. the second question is uh, you said that revision at the end so can we do the revision uh, orally instead of adding another slide to the presentation uh, the reason uh, to have a slide for uh, uh, oral thing is uh, that being the last slide you will usually leave the slide on the uh, presentation and you will ask audience for uh, responses so during that time it will reiterate uh, more to the audience so that's why we usually leave it with a line and an image which will stay in their minds as they as they leave the auditorium sri datta we'll go to sri datta from hyderabad sir my question is uh, when we have to write the review article we have to refer so many uh, other articles okay sir yes then at the time of abstract writing and all review article how to avoid the plagiarism how to avoid the plagiarism while writing the review article so if you think that review article you are going to just because you are writing from other article the plagiarism comes only when you use the same text so so long as you use the idea and write it in your own words it's not called plagiarism so but sir there are some concepts so we have to take from another referring articles no you should not use the whole sentence you should always rewrite so you could uh, do this for example you could take a sentence read it understand it write it in your own language say you are from andhra or telangana whatever so you write it in telugu and uh, then retranslate it in english back okay so you will make sure that you don't uh, use the same set of words of course the technical words technical phrases technical definitions terms that's okay but the order in which they come the way you are conveying the idea that is plain english and that should not be the same so you don't think that so some people have this habit of just because it's review article like cut and paste from several places and rewrite it that's not a good idea another okay. question sir while preparing the presentations we have to give referring or not references uh, while in a presentation the references are important but the way they are uh, written are slightly different in presentation not referencing sir yeah in presentation you should not use numbered references first of all and you should not use Uh, only author year you should not use uh, lakshmi and uh, sita 1995 that doesn't carry any meaning what you could do is uh, below in the slide the last line uh, somewhere at the bottom of the slide you could give uh, just the first author or the corresponding author then the journal name then the year of publication these three information are minimum and essential why why is uh, uh, author name journal name and year of publication essential we can get direct that article sir from that one volume no, magazine see, this is a presentation no in presentation how can somebody just go and go to some article they have to listen to you how can they go to another article because it will indicate which point we have collected from which paper yeah but how does it matter in the presentation they cannot go and click something and go and get something na they are listening to you the reason you give a corresponding author journal and year is for the audience they will know at least which journal it is published so they'll know okay it is published in this journal oh it is should be very good 
it was published in this year, oh, it is that old and I didn't know it. Okay, that kind of information will be helpful. Apart from that, you could give a short page number if you want, volume number and page number, all very short. You don't give the full title, everything. In so sometimes people will write that down and later they will go and refer it, uh, this one. So in presentation, you have to give a very brief, uh, this one, but not numbered references. My question is regarding uh, presentation skills and I would like to ask you, uh, how to attract and maintain the audience, uh, attention of the audience? Because usually what happens, you see, when you are presenting before your students and if it is for a long time, there are chances that they may get bored and uh, are there some strategies to avoid this? So, at least uh, one common strategy is to keep the audience um, interactive. So, uh, if you, if it is a classroom, uh, 10 minutes is the attention uh, span. So, after every 10 minutes, you can give them, ask them some questions. So, uh, and during the talk also, if you ask questions, you don't, I mean, you ask question doesn't mean you are waiting for an answer. But just the um, point of asking a question and then pausing for some time. Just think about this. What will happen if I do the following thing? And then just pause. And you don't ask, wait for them to answer. Just that itself will uh, keep the audience in your this one. Apart from that, there are jokes. People can tell some slightly jokes so that people don't go off to sleep. So, these are some small tricks that uh, people use. If your talk is interesting and gripping enough with nice visuals, that will also keep it, keep the audience uh, concentrated. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, LDRP, we are back to you now. So, tell us your example. Yes. Uh, I discussed my case with uh, uh, two of the colleagues. Uh, though the discussion was not very uh, conclusive or uh, I was not fully convinced with their arguments. Uh, uh, I will explain you the case. Uh, say I am uh, uh, testing a air conditioner based on a new technology. Okay. So, I am interested in say uh, the uh, performance parameter, say the uh, effectiveness of the air conditioner, mm. new air conditioner as mm. compared to the conventional air conditioner. Okay. So, I am evaluating the effectiveness as a function of say some input parameters. One of the input parameters is say the fan speed or okay. the air flow rate. Mm. So, I am plotting a graph say uh, the final output of the experiment is plotting a graph of uh, the effectiveness of the system mm. uh, as a function of air flow rate. Uh, now, what is the uh, what measured I, parameter? Air flow rate is the input or is the output parameter? Input parameter and the output parameter is effectiveness. So, how do you measure effectiveness? What is what is the thing you measure? Basically, it is the uh, actual performance versus the ideal performance. No, no. How do you quantify effectiveness? Uh, Actually, it is say in terms of uh, enthalpy difference also. The actual enthalpy difference produced for air and that will be in the numerator and the denominator would be the ideal enthalpy difference. Okay. So, this is, the, is just one of the. Yeah, this is the y axis and x axis you have say uh, air flow rate. Flow rate. And this you want to do for two different air conditioners. Uh, yes. Okay. So, what I feel is this is a test without any hypothesis and the, the, then the results will be presented. So, I am uh, wondering whether there should be a hypothesis for this and whether there should be a prediction preceding this test okay. so, or not. So, let me just uh, ask all three of you what, uh, what you first of all think is the aspect of uh, uh, scientific methodology that you are doing. What is your, in your opinion, what aspect of the scientific methodology that you are doing? I think it is a test and then observations and uh, 
see a test I'm comes presenting the results see, in the terminology a test means a test of a hypothesis a test of a prediction okay of course you are doing a test in the conventional sense test but not the test anything beforehand yeah, yeah that's what i'm trying to say in the conventional sense uh, you, what you are doing is testing but in the sequence of steps of terminology of scientific hypothesis this is not test okay so let let us hear from others what they have to say good evening sir My, yeah, uh, this is mayank baroj uh, from parul university vadodara i am here in gandhinagar to attend this workshop and uh, sir i mean since i am from technical communication background uh, i mean i don't know whether uh, it's right one or not i want you to give your comments on that that uh, what hardware replacement in conventional uh, in conventional ac leads to the overall improvement of the ac no no uh, what are you trying to answer my question was he has done some work the question is what aspect of scientific methodology that he has carried out is it an observation is it a hypothesis is it a prediction or is it a test there are four steps that we saw and which of these four steps is what he has done so what what is your name no sorry sir, i am dushyant patel yeah dushyant now what is the other person dushyant mayank and other dushyant patel uh, what is the original uh, the ac person's name as a dr jignesh jignesh so jignesh uh, mayank and uh, what dushyant okay so see jignesh has uh, done some work so jignesh wants to know how to map this to any of is it possible to map everything that we do into this scientific methodology steps so that was his concern correct am i correct jignesh right sir right so mayank feels that it is a test and what does uh, dushyant feel ah uh, sir i i feel to as a prediction you think it is a prediction prediction okay i would think it is just an observation you are trying to do all you are trying to do is that what is happening to this so the observation say if it is uh, you could find let's say it is better than the current ac or poorer than the current ac and that is just an observation now out of this observation you can draw a research question what makes it better so that becomes your research question the answer to that research question will be hypothesis so when you say what makes it better you could say this particular liquid that i am using as coolant is having a better heat transfer capacity and therefore it is better so that is your hypothesis it is not yet proved okay so that becomes your hypothesis which is an answer to the question what is the reason that the second ac is better than the first ac and then the prediction is that if it is because of uh, the liquid coolant that has changed if i use a uh, exactly same uh, equipment but only i change only the liquid coolant then it should be worse so that becomes a prediction and you do that test it becomes a confirmation or a rejection thing that you report could just be one part of this whole aspect thank you bye bye